How can anyone be sure if a prophecy is from God or not? Next on Polygamy, what love is this? She was born into polygamy. Her family followed the teachings of Joseph Smith, all of them, including plural marriage, especially plural marriage. Like many young girls, she had been promised to a man who was her father's age. But she fled. She ran away. She preferred an eternity of outer darkness to a life of polygamy. She chose hell over religious enslavement. That girl was me. After I fled, I thought I was free, but I realized I wasn't free. I was lost, alone, desolate. No home, no hope, no life. Then Jesus Christ found me and rescued me, and he loved me. In his love, I found real freedom, a real home, a real life. And Jesus offers you the very same thing. He is a shield to all who will take refuge in him. He has been a refuge for me, and he can be for you too. Knowing the surpassing love of Jesus Christ today, this is why I can look back and ask, polygamy, what love is this? Welcome to our show tonight. This is Polygamy, What Love Is This? And I am your host, Doris Hansen. We're glad that you've joined us tonight. And we're here every Thursday night to present information about the polygamy that Joseph Smith introduced into this culture that has subsequently ruined the lives of countless number of people for the last 175 years. And we just hope that we can open up some eyes to see the truth of all of this when we do our shows. Uh, we did have our discussion group last Monday night, as I had been talking about for a couple of weeks, and a lot of us got together and discussed different things. There were several people there. We had great discussions. There were people from three different polygamy groups, and it's a good, safe place to talk and to vent if we need to, or to just uh, talk about our experiences in the destructive lives uh, that most of us had shared in a polygamy group, and we can discuss freely. So the next time we have a meeting, we hope that some of you that have come from a polygamy background uh, would be wanting to come and join us. What's interesting is to compare the differences between the different polygamy groups, but what causes us to shudder most is when we compare the samenesses of the groups, and it's those samenesses that it keeps us in bondage to uh, polygamy until we can find out differently. In Deuteronomy chapter 18 verses 21 and 22 it says, and I quote, you may say to yourselves, how can we know when a message has not been spoken by the Lord? If what a prophet proclaims in the name of the Lord does not take place or come true, that is a message the Lord has not spoken. So we can know from that scripture if someone speaks for God and what they say isn't true, or if it's prophetic and it doesn't come true, that person is to be rejected and ejected. Because God teaches us all through the Bible that doctrine matters, and so does truth. God cares whether we believe the truth or true doctrine. And you can test it by Deuteronomy 18 and several other places in the Bible that tells us to. Now on the January 16th show, um, we discussed the prophecies of FLDS leader Warren Jeffs as published in a book entitled, Jesus Christ, A Message to All Nations. And our guest uh, for that show was Eric Johnson from Mormonism Research Ministry who has read Jeff's book from cover to cover, and which in my opinion absolutely qualifies him as, a, as an expert because 
<laughs> that was the most boring book I ever held in two hands. But we wasn't able to finish our discussion and he graciously agreed to come back and finish what we started that night and at least attempt to finish it. So I would like to introduce and welcome back as our guest tonight, Eric Johnson. Thanks Doris for having me on. Thank you again for coming in all this rain even, huh? <laughs> yep. Um, you wrote an article, we talked about this at the last show, <clears throat> on Warren Jeff's Book of Prophecies, and you've said, you say now that you've got it updated. Um, would you tell our viewers, new viewers, or maybe viewers who have forgot, where they can find your article and how they can contact you if they'd like? Well, they can go to our website where I work with Bill McKeever, a Mormonism research ministry, so go to mrm.org. Uh, backslash Warren hyphen Jeffs. It's on our front page and it's a very long article but if you like what you hear today then I think you're gonna um, probably enjoy reading a lot more detail as to what exactly I talked about on that previous show and what I'll talk about today. But uh, I have updated it because since that time, since January 16th of our last meeting, I didn't have access to the newest edition. And now the newest edition is another 100 plus pages. Oh, We're talking wow. about 1,000 pages. Mm. He added a number of things in here, including new revelations. And so I've, re I've read that since our last meeting as well. I ordered the second edition and uh, you can get that for a few pennies on Amazon.com because yeah. he sent it out free to I don't know, hundreds, perhaps even thousands of different schools Did and you libraries. Did the new one the same way? Same way. In fact, one pastor in Washington contacted me and said he got both of them, didn't know what to do with his books. He said, why are they sending me this information <laughs> in Washington D, um, State? And you can imagine if they got that far as to Washington, they certainly covered probably most of the West. Wow. That's interesting. Well... We're going to be talking a little bit more about those prophecies that uh, he has read in that book. And, and I'd like to just say up front before we get started, when we use the word Mormonism, we're referring to the doctrine that comes from the early Mormon church. And of course, the polygamous doctrine comes from Joseph Smith and Brigham Young. And the church that they started uh, is Mormonism. And the polygamists all believe in that. So if we use that term, I just don't get all upset if you think we're not talking about polygamists because we are. At one time, Warren Jeffs was on the FBI's top 10 most wanted list until he was finally apprehended, apprehended and then he was arrested in Nevada. He was subsequently jailed and tried and convicted and sentenced to life plus 20 years in a Texas prison. But it wasn't polygamy that got Warren Jeffs in trouble with American law. No. Like Joseph Smith, Warren Jeff used eternal salvation as an enticement for young girls to marry him. So. What happened that got him in legal trouble? Well, we have to understand that Warren Jeffs wasn't uh, tried once, but twice. He was first tried here in Utah back in 2007, and that conviction was overturned because the jury had been given improper uh, instructions as to what they were supposed to do. Mm -hmm. So Texas was more than happy to go ahead and take him in, so they extradited him over to Texas. Uh, they then charged him with uh, the rapes of two girls, 15 years old and 12 years old. Mm -hmm. And the thing about Warren Jeffs that really was the killer for him is he documented everything. Yeah. And in fact, even taped uh, his sexual escapades with a 12 year old. And that evidence was damning. Mm -hmm. And then Jeffs pretty much served as his own lawyer and just pleaded the fifth on most of the things that were happening. And it took the jury in Texas about half an hour yeah, or less so to be fast. to convict him and so he's in he's in prison for the rest of his life right he's in prison too but so let's talk about we're going to talk uh, spend a little bit of time on Warren Jeff's young brides and parallel them with Joseph Smith and um, and some of his young brides too yeah. uh, before we get into the rest of his prophecies so tell you've got your gotten a lot of information from Sam Brower's book Prophets Pray so I'll just turn it over to you and let you talk about this particular situation that you wanted to share. Well, first off, we need to understand that, uh, that Warren Steed Jeffs had uh, more than double the wives that Joseph Smith had. If he had, if Joseph Smith, the founder of Mormonism, as well as the fundamentalist church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the, the FLDS churches is abbreviated, it, if um, we have to understand that uh, Joseph Smith had 34 wives. Well, uh, Warren Steve Jeffs had 78. Mm -hmm. And of those 78, 27 were teenagers. 
and uh, with uh, with his 12 year old um, uh, Marianne was her name and uh, and because it was so well documented that's what ended up costing him dearly in the courtroom but uh, there's a quote in Sam Brower's book and I I have not met Sam Brower but he wrote an excellent book called Prophets Pray well uh, worth the read if you're interested in this it's subtitled my seven-year investigation into Warren Jeffs and the fundamentalist church of Jesus of Latter-day Saints and and uh, he writes this on page 219 he says none of the girls had to be dragged to the altar the children were filled with the belief that these marriages were good and pure and they understood the prestige that would come from being placed with such important men, mm -hmm. and so uh, and, and so, when we understand that uh, Jos uh, that uh, Warren Steed Jeffs um, was just like Joseph Smith, because family salvation was involved mm -hmm. here. It to was. be to be able to consider yourself married to the prophet was a sure ticket into mm -hmm. the celestial kingdom, so to speak. So they weren't physically dragged to the altar but they were coerced to the altar in other ways. Well, I mean, especially if you're being told by your parents and by everybody around you that what mm -hmm. you're doing is the right thing and it's what you've known. Mm -hmm. And you having grown up in that situation, I have not grown in that grown up in that situation, but you know the, the pressure that's on those young girls. Well, it's the guilt too. The, the guilt is, is overwhelming of what they place on you. Yeah, let me tell you a little bit about Mary Ann Jessup. She was the 12 year old who uh, ended up uh, uh, being probably the biggest case against because of all the evidence, because of his taped encounters with her. Even though she didn't want to testify, she at first wanted to and then later, as uh, it's talked about by Sam Brower, uh, they got to her pretty good mm -hmm. and really intimidated her. But uh, this is what um, Sam Brower writes in uh, his book. Let me, let me read this section here. This is what it says. Bishop Merrill Jessup had contributed his 12-year-old daughter, Marianne, to marry the prophet. Warren Jeffs contributed one of his own daughters, Teresa, who had turned 15 the previous day, to marry 36-year-old Raymond Merrill Jessup, one of the bishop's sons, who was already a polygamist. Wendell Nielsen chipped in his own 15-year-old stepdaughter, Leanne, to be a bride of Merrill Leroy Jessup, age 33, another of the bishop's sons. Family fortunes and fate were being knitted together in a big, huge criminal conspiracy. Uh, it goes on. I mean, I, to, I mean, right there, you're just seeing there's trading of going on. Right. There's all kinds of power plays that are happening mm -hmm. here. That's what they and, do. And at the ceremony performed by Jessup, the top of the diminutive Marianne's head came up to about the middle of the torso of her lanky husband, who stood six feet four. The marriage delighted him, and he exuberantly admitted one of his most heinous crimes to the scribe for the priesthood record, quote, there was sealed Marianne Jessup to Warren Steed Jeffs. That's me. Wow. And, and then Marianne was given to the care of, of Warren's favorite concubines, Naomi and Millie, for further training. And two weeks later, the child was led to the ceremonial bed that had been designed to the prophet's specifications. There, she was sexually assaulted by the panting, praying Warren, assisted by Naomi and at least one other wife, in a mockery of a loving marital union. And, I, I, you know, when you read this, and, and, and as you read Sam Brower's book, as you look at what uh, uh, Joseph Smith did uh, in his escapades with his yeah. wives and how he mistreated Emma Smith, I mean, it's just, a, it's terrible, the things that happened. But, um, yeah, all of this is fully documented mm -hmm. and uh, made an easy conviction. Yeah. Yeah, it did, and and it's actually, you know, when you hear, and I, I've heard part of the audio tapes, and it just made me sick. I, I actually couldn't listen to very much because it was so awful. But it appears that um, historically, Warren Jeffs and other leaders of the polygamy groups are actually do follow in Joseph Smith's footsteps uh, in their practices. He took two, Warren Je or Joseph Smith took two 14-year-old girls mm -hmm. in 1843. In fact, one-third of his wives were teenagers, just like a little over a third of Warren Jeff's wives. Yeah. Isn't it amazing were the comparison there? It, it's, it's interesting. Nancy Winchester and Helen Mark Kimball mm -hmm. uh, were the two 14 year old brides of Joseph Smith. Well, what I would like to do is, is kind of t discuss the comparisons uh, of the two, what you just said there, and, and what happened with Helen Mark Kimball. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Helen Mark Kimball wrote in her diary, and I want to quote from In Sacred Loneliness by Todd Compton. What she said, Joseph Smith said to her, and I quote, if you will take this step 
it will ensure your eternal salvation and exaltation and that of your father's household and all of your kindred. This promise was so great that I willingly gave myself to purchase so glorious a reward." End quote. Now this is the exaltation, yep. the promise of, but not just for herself, for her family and all of her kindred. Can you imagine doing that to a teenage girl, 14 years 14 of age, who hasn't, girl. she hasn't had a chance to even think for herself and her family is dependent upon her doing this. Right. She doesn't know any better. You can't blame her for going through with it and even being willing to do it. But same with Mary Ann Jessup. Yeah. She had that same pressure. So what happened here in the 1840s is happening in the 21st over century. Over and over and over again it does. Now, now Mary, um, or Helen Mark Kimball's mother's name was Valate. Uh, the wife, first wife of, Helen, of Heber C. Kimball. And she didn't like the idea, but mm. she had, like all good Mormon polygamous women, had to bow her will to her husband's will. And this is what Helen wrote about her mother regarding this polygamous marriage to Joseph Smith. Quote, None but God and angels could see my mother's bleeding heart. She had witnessed the suffering of others who were older and who better understood the step they were taking. And to see her child, who had scarcely seen her 15th birth summer, following in the same thorny path, in her mind she saw the misery which was sure to come as the sun was to rise and set, but it was all hidden from me." So. She didn't understand it. It no. was hidden from her. She didn't get it. Mm. She just thought the salvation was the important thing mm -hmm. to, to do what her mother, her father, and the prophet yeah. said to do. Yeah. But I want to bring our viewers' attention to some of these key words um, that she described. She, when she described polygamy, she said, used the words misery, suffering, bleeding heart, thorny path, hidden hidden from the child bride. So when people get all these fuzzy wuzzy feelings about their their great great grandpa or grandma had was a plural wife or had plural wives and oh it was such a wonderful thing and they were living their faith and I have to admire them for it. It was the same ugly thing then as it is now. Well and I think we need to be careful about these reality shows, quote unquote reality and, shows mm -hmm. or um, anything that you see on TV, oftentimes they will glamorize it and oh how wonderful and they have a little squabble, no big deal that an average couple wouldn't have. But they don't show you the behind the scenes things typically. I, I've seen some of the shows that will, like uh, there, there's one gentleman who lives here in Utah who had his four or five wives and, and one wife was overweight and so they, you know, they showed how terrible that was for her to try to deal mm. with her, her weight issues versus uh, these other women who she considered to be perfect. There's competition yes. going on. There is. There's always competition. And, uh, you know, again, I have not grown up in, in this kind of a situation. And I know not as many polygamists as, as you do, but I just know from all the reading that I've done, and I mean, Sam Brower's book, if you want to have a case against <laughs> polygamy, yeah. I think you read Sam Brower's book. And the message to all nations that uh, that I read, that makes it sound like polygamy is just an innocent thing and it's mm -hmm. an important thing, yeah. but it's certainly not mm -hmm. something that uh, has shown the benefits that a lot of people might think it would. That's right, and they think it's just a, a viable alternative lifestyle. And to, for, for Helen Mark Kimball, she said, and this is, uh, she's quoted as saying later, and this is from T Todd Compton's book in Sacred Loneliness, and I quote, she said, and I never would have been sealed to Joseph had I known it was anything more than a ceremony. I was young and they deceived me." Mm -hmm. So she is telling whoever reads, they deceived her. Who are they? Who deceived her? Well, I tell you what, um, it certainly it was it had to have been uh, Joseph Smith because Joseph he's, Smith. he's the one and who, hel and, and her father and yeah who convinced her that this was going to be the right thing yeah. and isn't that something that you can't trust the leader of your church mm -hmm. you can't trust your father what happened to the prophet will never lead you astray well that's that's not true here obviously because it leads to misery and oh. it certainly led to to misery in her life have you ever heard anybody give you a good justification for Joseph Smith's polygamy or at least the teenage brides. I've heard of a lot of garbage put out, but I've never heard any good justification for it. The only thing that you ever hear, and it's not anywhere in the, um, it's not being used by the scholars anymore, but the idea that there were so many different uh, 
uh, women out there that needed to have um, husbands, and that would be on the plains with Brigham Young, but with Joseph but Smith. But that's a myth. That, yeah, that certainly is, and it's been shown to be a myth, mm -hmm. and what the, uh, the LDS church has dealt with this in the last few months when they have come out on their website with these different articles to deal with these issues, and they basically have laid the blame for the entire polygamy issue at Brigham Young's feet, but Brigham Young did not start this, even though he not did dry. certainly, you know, he had 50 plus wives and he, he certainly practiced it, but it continued all the way through mm -hmm. until 1890, well after his death. So you can't blame yeah. Brigham Young for bring, the origination you know. nor the, um, the propensity for people to want to get married to multiple uh, women. That was not, and that's not historical. No, it certainly isn't. Okay, um, and you talked about the FLD, FLDS brides, the child brides. They weren't dragged to the altar, they, but they were coerced. It, it, it certainly is coercion. So let's get to these revelations. It hits many exhortations to the nations. Uh, Warren Jeff stressed the importance of treating the female gender with gentleness and respect, which I find very ironic. You've got some revelation you want to share. Yeah, well, I mean, when I was reading through, and yeah, I did read all the way through. I <laughs> didn't necessarily focus on every word because it does get very boring after a while, but I was noticing a number of different revelations that were sent to the nations, especially in the Muslim countries. Mm -hmm. And uh, for instance, DNC 159, 87 and 88, that he wrote on January 22nd, 2012, says, treat wives kindly, treat girls as sacred vessels. And uh, I mean, he's to Turkey, he's writing another one in, in section 21.6, he specifically is writing to Turkey, which by the way, is a secular Muslim country. It's not like the Middle East or places like that. But listen mm -hmm. to what he says, uh, where, where Turkey probably treats the women a lot better than they would in Iran, Iraq, and Saudi Arabia. But it says in, D, in uh, section Revelation 21.6, cause the women to have protection from cruel and corrupt practices of their husbands or other men who are of corrupt and evil practices. And, and then in, um, to Iran, he writes section Revelation 2541, let the women be schooled. <laughs> and section Revelation 177.9 says, let women be free to be educated, to have full law protection from abuse ye nations. Now, what he's writing to these different nations about the women, he doesn't even practice in his own that church. That is what blows my mind the, about that. The average, uh, the average education for the Lost Boys is third grade. That's uh -huh. the, the average that, that they're going to get. And, and the, the girls, girls is even less. Is even less. Uh -huh. And so for him to go after the Muslim countries and say to treat the women right, when they're, he's betting 12-year-olds yeah. and wanting to add them to his... I'm going to call it a harem if you're going to use the yeah, Muslim term yeah. for it. And, uh, and I, I would call that a hypocrite. And you know, he, he says, treat them with respect, keep them, treat them with kindness and respect. Do you know that he teaches the young boys, they teach the young boys and girls as they grow up, the young boys are supposed to treat the girls as if they were snakes. Yeah. That's what they, that's their doctrine. It's because the young girls and the boys will get together if, it, if he doesn't keep them apart. So and, that's not kindness and respectful. Well, and consider those lost boys, how they oftentimes have to be trained, retrained uh -huh. from, because they don't know how to treat women with respect when they're outside of that culture they because don't. that's what they've learned. And so here they get into, you know, they leave, they run away because they're kicked out or whatever the reason is, and uh, they just don't have any they clue. They don't have, and, and women don't either when they leave because they don't know if, all, if they don't, the, their relationship to man is so different in the group than it is when they get into the outside world. They don't know how to react. It's so different than attentions. the Bible. The it Bible is. says that we're supposed to, you know, submit one another um, the, the, uh, in Ephesians, and uh, right. we're supposed to honor the uh, you know the opposite sex. We're not supposed to treat them as baggage yeah. or as a means to an end. You're going to have lots of children, and you need to have lots of women to be able to produce this, and and to be forced into a teenage marriage, and then to have rule over her so that she can be pregnant with your 13 or 14 kids. Mm -hmm. It's a travesty. It is travesty, absolutely. It, it, it's uh, the, our country, our states should be embarrassed with what this is doing. In this book of prophetic revelations, it seems like he's endeavored to copy Joseph Smith in the way he writes yep. and the way he deals in his style. Um, but we know that time is the enemy 
of every false prophet. Mm -hmm. Because time has proven that Warren Jeffs, as well as Joseph Smith, has authored some false prophecies. So we know that, and people who are on both sides of the truth, on, on the right side of the truth, I should say, know that these two men cannot be trusted. Warren Jeffs can't, Joseph Smith can't, and they need to be rejected. In fact, I want to bring up at this point when uh, when they wanted to sell, they couldn't, were not able to raise enough money to print the Book of Mormon. And so they went to Joseph Smith and, and asked him what to do. And he put his hat in the hat, and then he put his head in the hat, and then he got a revelation from the rock that they were supposed to go to Toronto, mm -hmm. and they would sell the copyright of the Book of Mormon in Toronto. So up to Toronto they went, they didn't sell it. They tried and tried and tried, and they didn't sell it. They came back, and they were surprised, and they were depressed because Joseph Smith prophesied it, and they were sure it was going to happen, and it didn't. So they confronted Joseph Smith, and this is what he said, and I quote, Some revelations are of God, some revelations are of men, and some revelations are of the devil. That's an incredible quote. So once more I have to ask, what happened to the prophet will never lead you astray? Yeah. And if there's one revelation from the devil, it's polygamy. And this, again, for the LDS Church, they're trying to deal with this by laying the blame in their past history, and I think it's going to backfire. In it fact, better. we just saw, um, we have an article on our website talking about a New England or a New Zealand uh, bishop who is very concerned because all of the things that he had been taught about polygamy, all the things he had been taught about race and the priesthood, all these different issues, now the church is denying these things. Yeah. And even he said just a few months ago, he was using the same excuses like polygamy. I read He's, that. He, yeah, and he said that, uh, he said those were lies. Yeah. And he pointed out in this article, if the church could lie to me back then, and their leaders could have lied to the people or not told the truth, then why can't they lie to us today? And I think this is a major issue. It Doris, is. I just had some Jehovah's Witnesses come to my door a few days ago, and they were, we, I know enough about Jehovah's Witness theology to be able to talk about this in a, a, in a uh, educated way. So I was bringing out some of the points that they were agreeing with, that for instance, 1914 was meant by Charles Taze Russell to be the prophecy that, uh, th that the end would come. And uh, 1975, a prophecy that the end would come mm -hmm. and how they allowed for the cross and for birthdays and other celebrations in the early days. And they kept saying they acknowledged those things. They knew what I was talking about and they said they were wrong. Hmm. And I said, so each one of these things, they were wrong. I said, then why are you a Jehovah's Witness today? And they said, because we believe there's new light. I said, but those same leaders yeah. lied to you in the past. How do you know they're telling you the truth today? Well, because we know that we read the Bible and we can see they're telling the truth. When they're reading very closely yeah. based on their Watchtower and Awake magazines. Now, we're talking here about Mormonism. We're talking here about fundamentalism. The same issues are here. Mm -hmm. if, if the leaders were not telling the truth, if they are telling revelations that are of not God but of the devil, then is this a leader you right. ought to be following? Right, and Joseph Smith admitted that some of his revelations were from the devil. He right. admitted it himself. So how are we supposed to know? Yeah. How are we to know? Well, the Bible says that we're supposed to test everything we're according to, to test. 1 Thessalonians 5.21. The Bereans in Acts 17 were considered to be more noble because they searched the scriptures even after Paul, an apostle, had told them what, to, what it was that they should believe, mm -hmm. they, they were considered to be more noble. And 1 John 4, 1 says we are supposed Test to the spirit. see if they are from God because many false prophets have gone out into the so world. Every so spiritual, uh, every spiritual experience, and these religions do have spiritual experiences, but they're not from God, obviously, or we wouldn't be told to test the spirits. And that's why this is so important, Doris, for us to be able to know what is true. Jesus said to seek the truth and uh -huh. you will find it, right. but there are many paths not leading to God. And, mm -hmm. and in fundamentalism, as well as Mormonism, these paths are not only causing havoc with their spiritual lives for eternity's sake, which right. is bad enough, That's bad. but it's causing havoc with Helen Mar Kimball and Mary Ann Jessup. These, these girls are deeply affected mm -hmm. and their lives were messed up because of older men trying yeah. to, uh, to take that profit well, status and, and use it against know, them. The, these polygamy groups today, I know for a fact that the, polyg the, the group I came from, the Kingston group, they still barter for the girls. Yeah. They still trade them. They still trade the young girls to the men. 
These are yeah. people we're yeah. talking about. We, these are human it's like, beings. Yeah. It's like a slave trade or something. Yeah. It, well, it is. Actually, yeah. it's trafficking, too. Yeah. It definitely is. Okay, let's very quickly, we need to take the break in a minute, but let, very quickly, let's go to the one about um, um, the abortion. He gave revelations about the sin of abortion and um, and warned, I think, uh, I think it was right after Obama was elected. So you've got a quote there from that. Yeah, this is section Revelation 246 verse 12 and he wrote this in November 12, 2012. This is just a few days after the re-election of Barack Obama and uh, this is what uh, he wrote. Thus saith the Lord Jesus Christ unto all people of the nation of the United States, though you celebrate president of nation re-elected, Know he is in transgressing order, not hearing my peace of my spirit, whisper correct principle. Yet you as a nation uphold one in power who hath upheld murder of unborn youth order, that I decry against all who knowing order uphold shedding of innocent blood of the most helpless dependent of all children, the unborn. And uh, over and over again, um, both Joseph Smith and Warren Jeffs, they warn of a coming doom. Mm -hmm. And you have to wonder, is, is Jeff's copying from Joseph Smith? Mm -hmm. I, think, yeah. I think we would agree that there seems to be this idea. If you don't do what I tell you to do, but the abortion issue just, it, it's, it's interesting to me that again, the hypocrisy mm -hmm. um, rings out because here he's so concerned supposedly about unborn children, which I do agree in the issue of abortion, that it's wrong, mm -hmm. that human beings are at stake here. Right. But then he's not treating his children right. properly he's in not. his church. He's marrying, I mean, pre-adolescent Look what he's girls. doing to those kids. I mean, and, and so, so how, and, and abortion seems to be the one litmus test throughout, besides rejecting plural marriage. That was the other, those two, abortion and plural marriage. Those two issues seem to be the biggest issue with Warren Steed Jeffs. Is that and, right? That's yeah, interesting. Yeah, and, and um, I, it just fascinates me how um, how it's so convoluted. Hmm. Yeah, convoluted. Uh, w was his new uh, and we need to take the break in a minute. But his new prophecies in this new book were they as mangled in grammar uh, as the others? Or are they worse or better? It continues. Uh, it seemed right after he was convicted in 2011 to the fall of 2011, I noticed as if you read the whole thing, you would be able to see as I did that all of a sudden things just grammatically become strange. It's hard to understand. Mm -hmm. And it continues into his revelations. The, the new book that's 968 pages, I think it is, uh, goes all the way through September of 2013. And yes, Doris, they still are hard to understand. Mm -hmm. Whereas before you could understand them a lot more. Now he's putting verbs in front of his, his subjects and it just causes all it's kinds real. of problems when you try to read through this. So not yeah. only is it boring in some stretches, it's hard to understand. It's, it's very difficult to try and get grasp. I yeah. agree with you. Okay, we need to take our break now <clears throat> and open up our telephone lines. Our number is 801-973-8820, 973-TV20. Uh, we invite you to call in if you have questions or comments that you'd like to make about what our discussion is about tonight. Talk to our guest or enter the discussion. However, we do insist that you stay on topic. Um, please, as out of respect for our guests, stay on topic when you make your telephone call. We'd love to hear from you. And as we're waiting for your calls to come in, we will share our message with you. You are watching Polygamy, What Love Is This? Broadcasting live from Salt Lake City, Utah. This program is the broadcast outreach of A Shield and Refuge Ministry. Shield and Refuge is a point of first contact for Mormon fundamentalists who question the doctrines of the religion or who are actively seeking for an opportunity to escape the polygamist lifestyle. Examining the claims of fundamentalist doctrine against the backdrop of biblical truth is central to our efforts. We invite you to contact us. Call toll-free at 877-425-9993 or email us at tv at aboutpolygamy.com. We want you to know that we've made available to you some outstanding resources free of charge. You will find them at our website, www.whatloveisthis.tv. There you will find the DVD, Lifting the Veil of Polygamy, which documents the real-life stories told firsthand of those who were lifted out of the culture of polygamy through the power and love of Jesus Christ. Also, free of charge to you, 
is the booklet, Is Polygamy Biblical? It explores plural marriage in the context of God's Word and answers questions like, Did God ever command polygamy? Is it part of God's plan? While you are at our website, make sure to take advantage of the archived episodes of this program, which can stream on demand directly to your computer. There are more than 100 shows to choose from. And if someone you know is unable to view this program via live broadcast, recommend that they visit this same website every Thursday at 8 p.m. Mountain Time to watch this show through live streaming video. Simply follow the links to the live streaming video page. If you are watching live tonight, we invite you to call us as we open our phone lines. The number is 801-973-TV20. That's 801-973-8820. Now, back to Polygamy, What Love Is This? with our host, Doris Hansen. Welcome back to our program, Polygamy, What Love Is This? Uh, my name is Doris Hansen. I'm your host, and our guest tonight is Eric Johnson. And we've been talking about uh, Warren Jeff's book of prophecy called Jesus Christ, a Message to All Nations. And he um, has uh, 900 plus uh, pages in a book that he had published and then sent out to who knows how many states or countries we don't know. that that's involved with. But we're discussing some of those prophecies and some of the hypocr hypocrisy involved in his prophecies and how you can tell a false prophet from a true prophet of God. So uh, we'll continue on with that. Our telephone lines are open. If you want to call in and enter the discussion or have a question, we insist that you stay on topic tonight. When you call in, out of respect for our guest, you really need to do that. And anyone who calls in and, and offers a different topic, I'm afraid that we would have to ask you to call back or email us at tv at aboutpolygamy.com and we'll be happy to discuss any topic that you'd like at that point. Section Revelation 59.9 um, says that he's going to cause a scourging to come up on this state. What was going on with that? What's the prediction of doom there, and what state's he talking about? Well, in that particular revelation, he does write to a number of different states as well as countries, but that one is Illinois, and he talks about an earthquake that's going to take place there. And uh, the problem with uh, Warren Jeffs in his so-called prophecies is he never really gives you a good timeline but in this one he says it would happen soon now he does not like uh, Obama he does not like uh, the government go governmental system of the United States because he feels that they are persecuting him by mm -hmm. having him in jail so he predicted this to come soon well if you look at the history of earthquakes in Illinois there are not very many now typically he'll describe typhoons and tsunamis and earthquakes for places that typically would have them. So there's no mystery when he's saying that certain countries like Nicaragua are going to get earthquakes. They have yeah. them all the time. Yeah. This was a bizarre one because uh, since 2011 when he gave that prophecy, the biggest earthquake they've had so far is a 3.2 on the Richter scale, mm -hmm. which is in California, that was like every fourth day kind of occurrence <laughs> yeah. that would take place. So, so I found that to be an interesting uh, uh, prophecy, but I really believe he was very specific that that state really is going to pay the price. And I can think of nothing more than perhaps it's because it's the home state of Obama. Anything he can do to get back at that president, he would love to do. And he it, had insisted in one of his revelations that the president set him free out of jail, and he hasn't done that. He sent, so would that be one reason? Well, absolutely. Be? In fact, they had sent out uh, Section Revelation 5, uh, was written specifically to the government, and they sent out over 600 copies of this revelation to everybody in Congress, including the president as well, the judges, and even Clinton, uh, who was the Secretary of State at the time, received one as well. And in that Section 5 revelation, it basically says, let him out, uh, Warren Jeffs. This is Jesus speaking. Again, all of these, right. supposedly Jesus is speaking, let him out, or there will be a price to pay. Yeah. And I doubt any of them probably ever even saw this revelation. I wonder if Homeland Security scrambled for a minute or two on yeah. this. It makes you wonder, doesn't it? Okay, we do have a couple of calls coming in right now. So we'll take line two, Mary calling from Washington. Hello, Mary. Hello, Mary. Mary? Hello? Are we not on? Hello, there must be something wrong with our phone here. Let me put her on hold and try line 
three, line three. Deborah, hello? Well, we've got, looks like we've got something wrong with our phone, folks. Sorry. Uh, we'll see if we can find out what's wrong with it and get back with Mary and Deborah. There uh, it goes. No sweet it, was, there. it was unplugged. It was unplugged. Okay, let's try this again. Mary? Hello? Hello, Mary. Yes, you're on the air. Oh, okay. Thank you. What is your Hello, question? Hello, Doris? Yes. What's your question or your comment? Uh, yes, I was just commenting on your program tonight, and I wanted to say that the, the Mormon Church recently has come out with some essays explaining polygamy, and they, they don't once mention the very unhappiness that it's caused and the things that you've been discussing on your show tonight. And they don't mention that Joseph married 14-year-old girls yep. and all the pain that Helen Mark Kimball must have right. endured right. when he had promised her salvation yeah, for her whole family. Mm -hmm. And it's too bad they don't bring those things out. And another thing they didn't bring out in their essay was that Joseph married women that were already married. There was no need for it at right. all. Exactly right. And that it's just caused misery and unhappiness, and it's still causing it. Earlier this month, I did two shows on that essay uh, the LDS Church published on the website on LDS.org. And I went through point by point on that essay on how they distorted the truth and covered up the truth of the early Mormon polygamy. So you might want to go back. It's on the Internet. You could go back and watch that. Yes, I will. That would be very good. I can't understand why they can't just once and for all come out with the truth. Well, and the idea of polyandry is uh, something that certainly is not talked about. But, but uh, you know, as far as Warren Steed Jeffs is concerned, he, uh, he, he didn't marry other people's wives, but he did marry all of his, um, all but a couple of his stepmothers mm -hmm. from Rulon Jeffs. And yeah. so, uh, so that's more than a, uh, I mean, that's several dozen women right there of his 78 well, wives. And uh -huh. that just doesn't seem right either. Plus, he but, reassigns families, sure. you know. So it's almost the same thing because they don't bother getting the divorce. In fact, right now, if a woman wants to get pregnant, the husband and wife can only hold hands. They can't have sex. And if she want, if they want to have a kid, they've got to go to one of three men, and the husband has to be there, and the woman and this man, the wife and this man, has sex in front of the husband to produce a baby. Mm -hmm. well, that's polyandry. Yeah. yeah. That's just ridiculous. This whole thing on polygamy from Joseph Smith on down came from the wrong source, and well, we know what that source is. Well, mm -hmm. we talked about that already, too. Yeah. Thank you for calling, Mary. We appreciate okay. it. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Bye. Bye now. Thank you for what you're doing. We love your show. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Okay. Line three, Deborah from South Jordan. Deborah? Yes, ma'am. Yes, you're on the air. Do you have a question for our guest? Um, yes. I was just um, wanting to speak with her about the most recent airing of the Dr. Phil show, which spoke to... Um, uh, Deborah, we, wa we really want to stay on topic tonight, and that's off topic. We are talking about Warren Jeff's prophecies and the books uh, that he wrote. So if you want to call next week or some other time about that, I'd love to talk with you about it. Oh, okay. That was completely um, something that was spoken about on the Dr. Phil show, which is a national show. So I thought that was on topic. Well, well, it's not on the topic for tonight's subject, but we would love to talk to you about it if you want to call in some other week. All right. Thank you. Uh-huh. Bye. Okay. Line one, we have an anonymous caller. Hello, anonymous. You're on the air. Uh, yes, I would like to ask a question. I don't know if it's on this topic or not, but um, I would like to ask you, why does the Mormon Church let these people in the polygamy group get away with what they're doing? When they have put a stop to the gay people, and I'm really proud of the, uh, the mayor or whoever he is that's, that's put a stop to it or trying to put a stop to it, why don't they put a stop to... The Why do they allow it? Are you talking about the LDS Church, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, based in Salt Lake City? Any, any, uh, any of yes. I'm asking that question. Well, the the Mormon Church or the LDS Church is not uh, affiliated at all with the FLDS Church. We're talking here about a completely separate movement yeah. called the uh, Fundamentalist Church, and uh, it is not uh, the, the the Mormon Church does not believe in polygamy today. They stopped. Well, actually, they stopped doing polygamy twice, 1890, and then they 
they counted it for good in 1904, right. which that paper that was mentioned earlier by the caller, uh, they acknowledged that in their paper, mm -hmm. that there was a second, right. there was a second wave that until 1904. Mm -hmm. So just so you know, the, the, a Mormon would be very offended if somebody thought that they were still practicing it, and they very much are against it. There was a general conference just about a decade ago, and I forget who it was that got up there and said, we are, I think it was Gordon Inkley, who said, we are not affiliated at well, all with any of those polygamous that. groups, and, and don't, not. don't. Well, uh, d and on top of that, it's not their jurisdiction. They're not the law keepers. Yeah. They, they don't carry the badges. You know, they can't go out and break up these groups. That doesn't have anything to do with it. But they, uh, so, so yeah. in other words, the, the, the LDS church, they, they are against it. So, but why do they allow or why did they let that go on uh, in their state? It's not up to the LDS. It's up to our law keepers. It's up to our attorney general. It's not up to the church. And see, when Warren Jeffs they was... They don't like it either. When Warren Jeffs was tried, he wasn't tried for being a polygamist. He was tried for child abuse. Uh -huh. And uh, that's what got oh, him right. convicted. Because literally, the, Utah cannot go about persecuting or prosecuting every single... Uh, a polygamous family out there, they don't have the funds to do that or put them all in jail. So right. as long as you practice it quietly, the rule has been you can do that. It's when you start becoming more public um, that you're going to, like the TLC show, they ended up moving to Nevada because they were getting some pressure yeah. Because, yeah. because they made it so public. But they're not going to go out of their way because financially you just can't, you can't manage that. Yeah. Okay, thank you for your call. Thank you. Uh huh. Our phone lines are open, 801-973-TV20. Please call and stay on topic. We would appreciate that. Um, let us talk about Jesus, the Jesus that Warren Jeffs warned these people about in his prophecies. Was he a kind and gentle Jesus or an angry and judgmental Jesus? Uh, I tell you what, he really was as judgmental as can be. He was an angry Jesus. He wants revenge and certainly the God uh, there is a just God, we believe that, and if you read the Old Testament, you could say, well, he sounds like an angry God, but he's certainly a God of love. It's just that the people were doing all these things to, to create the havoc, and, mm -hmm. and the God of uh, Warren Jeffs, or the Jesus of Warren Jeffs, is certainly uh, looking for any way to get back at people and to, yeah. and, and to cause them to suffer for their sins. And that's, what, that's exactly the way I was raised, exactly. Mm. I never knew God loved me. I never had a clue that Jesus was God, of course. But to know that He loved me, because it was always revenge. It was yep. always, you do this or He'll get you for yep. that, you know. Absolutely. And it scared me to death. Mm -hmm. I, was, I li lived scared to death of God. And the polygamy groups all do that. Of course, a lot of religions. Uh, do that as well. What seemed to be Warren Jeff's opinion and why he brings this up is beyond me. Maybe you can answer that. Of Osama bin Laden. Yeah, well, Osama bin Laden, uh, when he was captured, um, and the thing is that Warren Jeffs has access to media. He must be watching TV, and he, so a lot of the things that he'll talk about, he dates, and it's usually a few days after such an event took place. And so when they captured and then killed Osama bin Laden, he seemed to be really angry, and he, um, I, well, I have a theory. My, my theory is this. He seemed to really uh, relate to somebody who was um, at, like uh, bin Laden, who was an enemy of the United States. And as they say, my enemy's enemy has become my friend. There's a saying, something uh -huh, like that. And yeah. I, think, I think in that sense, he liked, he liked that idea uh, that bin Laden was, for all these years, had been on the loose. And maybe, in, in my estimation, maybe even idealized that, that guy. And he's against violence, of course, but uh, he certainly is no friend of the United States. And so, therefore, almost became, um, Bin Laden almost became, I think, a, so, a hero to him. So, because, but Warren Jeffs got caught and Obama didn't. And yeah. so he, he kind of, okay, that's interesting. All right, we have another call here. <clears throat> Line two, for, uh, Louise from Smith, Smithfield. Louise, you're on the air. Louise? Hello? The light's on. Hello, Louise? Are we having trouble here again? Maybe try one. Louise? Gone, okay. 
She, okay, she my, my, looks like she might have hung up. Okay. Uh, in the fall of 2010, Warren Jeffs dedicated the majority of, of the sections to the destruction of the world and Armageddon. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. This seems to be something that Joseph Smith did. We heard it all the while we were growing up. All the polygamy groups have done it. Uh, but he addresses particular nations with these revelations. Of course, we can't cover them all. But what's the bottom line of all of these prophecies to the nations? Well, if you don't follow what, Joseph, uh, what uh, Warren Steed Jeff says, then you're going to suffer whatever the penalty is. And as I mentioned earlier, most of the penalties involved physical destruction that was very typical for the land that it was in. For instance, uh, he gives one with Japan. He has three or four different revelations specifically aimed at Japan. The first one is section Revelation 29, and he does this a year before the tsunami took place. And through that, he talks about they need to get more moral, no abortion, all of these different issues. Doesn't mention tsunami once. Oh my. Well, isn't it interesting in 2000, I think it was 2011 when they had their major earthquake, tsunami, yeah. all kinds of destruction. All of a sudden, a month later, Japan gets a major revelation and talks about a second tsunami that was going to come huh. if, they, if they did not follow what he had said. I find it strange that why didn't he, if he's going to have destruction and he's going to mention a tsunami in the second revelation, mm -hmm. why didn't he include that the first time? And uh, again, tsunamis are, are very common in the Pacific where, I mean, in, in the next 10 years, there's going to be three, four, five major tsunamis in that region. So it's not rocket science to right. be able to say, well, if you don't do this, then this is going to happen. Or, or uh, again, we go back to the Illinois illustration. Uh, I don't understand why he came up with something unusual like that, because that wasn't <laughs> typical of what he did. And so he was very big on the destruction unless uh, they got their, their uh, lives together. And, and this just shows that a false prophet uh, the time is the enemy of a false prophet and false prophecies. Mm -hmm. and, and what, like soon, you know, this was going to happen soon. And, and ha what is soon in Warren Jeff's mind? Well, yeah. What's the time frame for soon? Well, uh, and, and you can't figure that out because it, as he gave in that revelation to uh, Illinois, he did use the word soon. Typically, he wouldn't use language that was very specific. And so a person who is a follower of Warren Jeffs could say, well, it hasn't happened yet. And uh, they can come up with all kinds of excuses. And so when you have all these different revelations and say this is going to happen, well, it's, it's, um, you just you can't figure out, okay, when is this supposed to happen? He won't tell you. Mm -hmm. And then other revelations that he'll give you, he, he gets, like, for instance, uh, we're having a drought right now in this area. And uh, I read in, in January that it was about a 10% chance that we would get the rainfall we would need. It'd have to rain every week for the rest of the winter for us to be able to get to 100% mm. of what we would normally have. Mm. So a 10% chance. That was the odds of you predicting that unless the people of Utah turn to God, you're going to have a drought. Well, that's, not, that's pretty good odds that 90% chance you are going to have a drought. And the same thing he did with the other countries. Uh, he would read the tea leaves and he would be able to say, okay, I can figure this out based on the averages. Okay, we have another caller, line three, Robert calling from West Valley. Robert, do you have a question? Yeah, well, I guess kind of a statement that is a question. Uh, okay, you need to hurry because we're getting close to the end. Okay, um, yeah, my whole thing with this, because I've thought about this, and, you know, there's many other things like it. We just have to get our answer from God, because if you read the Bible, that's where the 12 tribes of Israel came from, and it states flat out when David had Uriah murdered, God said, you know, how dare you, you know, look at all the wives I gave you. So even though Warren Jeffs, he's got more history than anybody knows to show that he doesn't have the word with him, and Joseph Smith marrying other people's wives, I mean, even if you got a confirmation from the Spirit that this church is true, just there's so many monkey wrenches. I'm like, you know what? Mm -hmm. uh, we just can't get the answers from any person on earth. We have to get the answers from God. Right. Agreed. Agreed. And again, the Spirit, we have to test the spirits. If we think the Spirit told us to do something, there's only one test, and that's the Bible. So when you take a book like this, a thousand pages, as impressive as somebody might think that is, if it does not coincide with God's Word, the Bible, then 
it needs to be rejected. And, and uh, so not only does Deuteronomy chapter 13 and 18, as you quoted earlier, uh, come in, but just the whole picture of all the theology and all of the prophecies, you put those two together, the theology contradicts what the Bible has to say, and the prophecies are just gobbledygook, and I'm not trying to be mean-spirited, I'm just saying if you read through this, it's just, uh, read the article yeah. on the website that mm -hmm. I have yeah, on yeah. mrm.org. Or the Book of Mormon, or are you talking about Warren Jeff's book? Warren Jeff's Message to All Nations, and uh, it just... Yeah, that's a good joke. Yeah. I mean, the fact yeah. that he was doing, I don't know if you know this, but, you know, he was doing orgies with the girls and demanding people watch him in that temple. Well, that happened where, that that did happen. I don't know about orgies, but there was some viewer. The police he, investigated, he, they found this, in some supposed holy room, this monster bed, and all these chairs lined up around it, and they found out through investigating that he would be with these girls, and he recorded it. Oh yeah, and that's how he got convicted. He had a uh, altar that was specially built in, with a bed uh, that was in his uh, Texas temple, and uh, and he would have his wives teach There's those the teenagers. Bed there on the screen. Yeah, he he would be, he would teach the the teenagers through the wives that he already had, and they would instruct her on how to do this. And then when he tapes this, audio tapes this. I mean, uh, and you can go to, again, I'm not necessarily advertising Sam Brower's book, but he does go into some description, and it's pretty gross. It's pretty sick. It is. It's pretty sick. Well, it looks like we've reached the end of another show. We got through a lot of stuff yes. tonight, but not everything fun. again. But I appreciate you coming and offering your expertise on this. And we do, do hope that you, our viewers, will go on uh, his website and read the rest of his article because it's very good and very insightful about these prophecies of Warren Jeffs. Um, on June 5th of 2002, Brian David Mitchell kidnapped 14-year-old Elizabeth Smart because he wanted to have a plural wife, and he claims that God told him to do it. In May of 1843, Joseph Smith stole the future of 14-year-old Helen Mark Kimball when he married her as his 25th wife because he claims God told him to do it. Today we call it kidnapping and rape, but in Joseph Smith's case they call it celestial marriage and righteous polygamy. Jesus told us that the root bears after its kind. Joseph Smith is the root of Mormon polygamy. And what about Helen's father, Heber C. Kimball, who willingly bartered his 14-year-old daughter to Joseph Smith? What would we call that today? Well, several men are in a Texas prison right now because they bartered their daughters just like that. We decry Brian David Mitchell, but Joseph Smith and Brigham Young are held up as prophets of God. We wonder how that can be. If God requires polygamy for salvation, as Joseph Smith claimed, then Jesus Christ died on the cross in vain. If celestial marriage or works of any kind can save us or help save us, then God is lacking intelligence. He lied to us and he died for, ne for us needlessly. All that pain and agony and death on the cross to accomplish what Joseph Smith said polygamy will do. The Bible says the wages of sin is death and Jesus took our sin and died. Polygamy can't do that for you. In fact, nothing that we can do will make points with God except to believe and embrace his testimony of himself through Jesus Christ. There are no works, no so-called gospel requirements at all. No commandments of men, no church, no polygamy will do for you what Jesus Christ has already done. Amen. Good night. Amen.